In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a bubble chart. We have, for example, here, not only values, but also the dates matching with it. So we have the date here with the value. And if you go here, we see another one and we have another one and another one. So let's start to explore how we can do this. So let's look how to add dates on a X scale in a bubble chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what I need to do here is I need to go to Chart.js3.com, getting started. This specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box, you're going to get a default code. So once you're on here, copy this entire chunk of code. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains the JavaScript object. Paste it in there. I'm going to cut out the title here, put that in there. Say refresh. Now we have a bar chart, but what we want is a bubble chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to say here, let's convert it into a bubble. Then we're going to save that and refresh. Now we have a bubble chart. So what we want to do now, of course, is having the structure for this. So I'm going to put in here a proper date structure or a data structure that supports the bubble chart. So what I need here is I want to get data bracket and then in here enter enter and within here. Parentheses, there's an X, and for the X here, the X value, basically what the label is supposed to do will now be assigned to the X value. So this one can be removed or set, uh, well, just deleted. So then here, let's start with our dates. We're going to say our date will be 2022, because it's a structure, and it's a string value. And I'm going to say April 20. That would be nice. And there's a comma, Y. What would be our Y would be, let's say, value of 3. And finally, we have the radius, which would be the size of the bubble. And the bubble can be six pixels, comma here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and paste that one, two, three, four, five, six times. That will be all right. So we have some random data. So what I'm going to do here is six and nine. And then here we can do maybe again, uh, well, three, six, nine. And here I'll just do nine and nine. All right. Let's say here three, three, and three. And then here we have nine. So we have all of these unique values. Of course, here we need to have some unique values. I'm going to say here. Although it doesn't have to be here in chronological order, so it doesn't matter. So that would mean that we could do this one like that. Or we can even say here, April, of March, and this one will be 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, just to show you. Save, refresh. All right, so now what happens, of course, it doesn't recognize the structure. And I think we've forgotten a comma here. Make sure you have the comma, save, refresh. As you can see here, it still doesn't recognize the structure. Why? The bubble chart considered this as a scale with a number from 0 to infinity, basically. So what we need to do now is we just want to say this here is not really a string, but it is a date object. So we need to convert this. How do we do this? Well, what we need is we need to go to chartjs.org on this front page, go to ecosystem, click on ecosystem. Once you're on ecosystem, scroll down, and we're going to get the adapters for the dates. So there are three options here. We have the moment the Luxon and the date FNS. And what we will be needing is, well, I will be using this one because we only need to add one JavaScript file and we won't do any adjustments or modification on the date. So in that case, I highly recommend this one. It's harder to use, but if you don't do anything except adding a file, this only requires one JavaScript file to be added. This one requires two JavaScript files to be added. And the moment, moment JS is being deprecated since 2020. So don't use this, skip that one. They moved the team of moment JS if you're not mistaken, they move to Luxon. However, Luxon is easier to use, but requires two JavaScript files. So I want to just be easy and only use one JavaScript file. So I'm going to use the date FNS. So scroll down here, copy this code here, or this line of code, which is the uh, charges adapter date FNS bundle. Copy that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here, enter, enter, paste. So what I want to make sure is that the JavaScript file loads first because this date FNS is dependent on whatever is in here. So there are certain variables that the date FNS needs to load, which comes from the chart.js file. So once we have this, if I save this refresh, of course, we're not done yet. Why? We didn't indicate that the scale is now a time object or time scale. So I'm going to do that right now. So in here, X, then I'm going to say your scales, and then we say here uh, type. The type of scale will be time. Basically, this is now the time object being referenced. So now we can use this time object here. That's this one here, the namespace. Make sure you put a comma here, or else we get an error later on. And here, we're going to say unit, and then we're going to indicate this will be based on the day. Save, refresh. 
there we are and there we have it. you can see here this is the one in March March 2022 20, and we have this here and if you see this here maybe you say oh, hold on look at this uh, clipped up item how do we solve that well let's solve that one as well quickly so what I'm going to do here in here we're going to say in the options enter and I'm going to say layout and then I'm going to say just padding and I'm going to say here a padding of maybe 10 pixels comma save refresh as you can see the chart is now slightly smaller and then you have it oh I guess our padding is still not good enough so I guess we can do maybe 15 pixels save refresh and no that doesn't work as well so uh, let's do more specific so I'm going to say here padding let's say here the right side will be 10 and then we do here maybe top let's do 5 let's see what happens say refresh here we are and still it does not work exactly all right so apparently this doesn't work nicely this so this cut it caught me a bit off guard so let's solve that one in a different way so for some reason the padding I know before this worked but fair enough we'll, we'll skip that one so I'm going to show you another way to do it so what we have here is basically this we could maybe increase here our item so I would say here on the Y scale comma we say grace and we just put in here one a value of one so there will be like one more value on top the grace basically makes sure that there's always additional values here up so that's the first one but of course then we have to solve still the right side here so what I'm going to do in the right side grace will not work on the right side it's only on a vertical level so or maybe it does work if it is a uh, a number but definitely not with time so what I need to do here is I'm going to say enter and go to the minimum and here or basically here what we can do a minimum or max let me just add up here whatever would be the max so what I'm going to do just for now is going to add up a specific additional date here I'm going to copy that put it in here say here number 27 comma save there we are so this would be the way to do it. of course we could soft code this for now I will skip that I will make a separate video for that so that is basically how we can put in here a date structure in the bubble chart so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to do something more, there is still another video that I highly recommend you to explore, which is how to use the day ticks and hour ticks in the x-axis in chart. You guys very, are basically showing a full day or a segment of a day, but then here the hours are being highlighted in bold, and then you can see every 15 minutes it shows a specific tick here, which is in a unbolded font size, which is quite nice because it shows clearly the segments and how it's being divided.